is pertaining to me being a teen parent obviously not now but when I was a teen parent and what kind of conversations I had with my daughter when she hit uh, being a teenager so tell us what pure love is about well pure love is about open and honest conversation between children and their parents about sex sexuality um, their bodies consent everything that goes along with it um, Life, really, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit prior, and this is probably going to be like a the first first time conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, because I can't remember, I cannot remember ever saying to you like, "Don't be like me. Don't, don't be a teen mom." Um, and the funny thing about that is, even if it were to happen, I would never look at it in a bad way either because I feel like you are such a good example of how you can turn a possibly bad situation into a great one. Mm -hmm. So it was never scary for me to either be a single parent or a young parent. Because I'm like, I knew that no matter what, I could use the tools you gave me and that I would have your support. So it was Absolutely. never, Absolutely. it never was scary for me like it is for other people. Yeah. Thank you, baby. Thank you. That. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't, remember doing that because I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be like, you know, like a, the, the, we talk about fear a lot, right? Like this um, um, teaching through fear. Um, and I, I, I didn't want to do that because I, I mean, I got pregnant with you when I was young, but it was not the ideal situation, right? Because you want to have, you want to be stable, have a job, you want to have support. Um, I didn't have <laughs> all of those things, um, but I knew that I I wanted to be a good parent. Like I wanted to know what that was. I wanted to um, explore the possibilities of what a different kind of parent could be. Uh, and this is not to say anything negative about my mom, because I, I love my mother very much. And my mother parented me the way that she knew how to parent me. But as times change, um, you have um, to change your way as a parent. Yeah, yeah, new information, the internet, the interweb, you know, all of these the resources. <laughs> um, yeah, you start. You have to start um, changing with the time and thinking about what 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 does it mean. And I think every generation of parents have to like ask themselves that question. So um, I was truly excited. I was excited um, to uh, be pregnant. And, um, and maybe I was naive, um, but I had plans. <laughs> I had plans about how I was going to do this and how I was going to talk to you and how I was going to be better and <laughs> all this stuff. Um, but it was definitely very, very, very difficult. But as I often say, one of the best jobs I've had in my life. True. Yeah. Um, but did you feel any pressure, like when you were like a teenager and stuff? Because I know I was trying to talk to you about sex and all that stuff, but um, I don't, I don't know if I felt pressure for that. Um, I never really felt pressure. I mean, the biggest thing being I wasn't sexually active in my teens, so it's not like I was at risk anyway. But um, I don't think it was ever. I don't know. It wasn't that scary for me again because I'm like, it's not like. I had such a, I had this example of like, oh my God, it's going to be like this and I'm going to be miserable and I'm going to like, you know, like it wasn't like a scared straight episode. Like, this is not what you want to do. Like, you see this team mom, you want to be like that. Like, it wasn't like that. It was just like, like for me, I saw it as a, a triumphant story. Like your story, I see it as a triumphant one. So it wasn't really a scary 
otherworldly thing for me to be like, this is something you want to always avoid. Because, you know, like a lot of people, they put a bad stigma on it being a young mom. But I really don't see it that way. Like, of course, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want to grow up while your child is also growing up. But if it happens, you know, you just have to deal with it the best way you can and just try to be better for you and your child. But I felt like, if it were to happen, like, even now in my life now, I'm like, if it were to happen, you know, you can never really be prepared for a child, ever. No matter if you have the money, the support, the time, the time off from work, whatever you Cats do. Cats are having a fight over there. <laughs> all the fur babies are here, so. <laughs> but I feel like no matter what, you can never, ever fully be prepared to bring in another life. And so I was just like, Whatever happens, I'll just deal with it as it comes because like, you can't plan for that. But you, you bring up an interesting thing, right? Because I remember um, conversations around, and this intersects like poverty and also like uh, the cycle of what they call the cycle of poverty and the cycle of like teen pregnancy. So one of the things I know that people often talked about around me was this idea that I was going to taint, you know, like just... Uh, give you this, uh, almost invite you into this world of, you know, being on welfare and like and thinking it's okay, world. you know, like, oh, it's okay, you can have babies because you, you have welfare. And and that's that's the stigma against welfare and the people on welfare. It's a stigma about poverty. Um, and uh, it, it speaks to this, uh, um, the right, I think this, this right about uh, our own bodies and how we, what we decide with our bodies. If we want to have a baby, if we don't want to have a baby. Um, what I think is interesting about the whole um, stigma about being a teen mother is throughout history, like up until very recently and even now in other countries, children are being married off at 12, 11, 13. Um, and throughout history, women have been married off very young and like pushed to have children very young, as young as 14 years old. So it's funny to me that now that women actually have the are making the might not be the conscious decision to become a young mother now it's bad mm -hmm. you know like because i'm like throughout history you force us to have kids young because it's better to get them out of the way mm -hmm. and so you can have more kids but now it's just like oh now you're straining our society's resources now you're just getting lazy now you're this and i mm -hmm. feel like it's a cultural thing as well and maybe more against um lower income poc more than anybody else because i'm like this is this is not new. Mm -hmm. Having young mothers is not anything new for any part of the world, and like it seems like certain people are the ones that get ostracized for it, other than you know rather than other people or other races. I feel like I don't know. I could be wrong, but the stigma. I think, I think it's a, like a combination of things, right? It's like sexism, right? definitely, um, because even you said like they were married off, right? Like this idea that women were property and like you know. Uh, this is the way things are so if you do this now and now with with uh, the times changing maybe maybe the conversation is um focusing on the idea that i'm being devil's advocate here like the idea that um there's so much more opportunity right yeah that you don't have to do young that. women that you don't have to do that that you can wait um that you can have a career you can go to college you can do these you know all of these things and i and i think I think in some senses, yes, yes, you know, like there, there are there are people who desire, choose to, and have the resources to go to college, um, and then sometimes there are those who cannot or do not or don't want to uh, go to college, uh, and can make uh, uh, the choices that they need to make in order to decide how they're going to use their body. Um, I think though there's a romanticism of of it having children. I I think. You know, I think sometimes, and I know for me it was that way. I'm speaking from experience. Uh, I know that there was a romanticism about like having someone that would unconditionally love you and you love it. And of course. It was just like, I'm going to have somebody that I'm going to take care of and they're going to love me and they're going to be there always and forever. And so, of course, there is a romanticism of it. And then when it happened, I'm just like, oh, this is real. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I got to feed this baby. I got to do this. And I did it. Like, I took that responsibility very very seriously and i did everything i had to do you know like i was hustling i was doing whatever i needed to do and i think i think 
that and that is the conversation I think like if you didn't have to hustle you know like why put yourself in a position where you had to hustle right but I think a lot of times uh, for some people for me I really could not grasp the I couldn't grasp uh, how expensive it is um, to you know to raise a child and all of the little things that went in, into it and I did so all of those things. things I did all of those things but at the time I was like at the time I said I can do this and I was right I would I did do it uh, uh, but there were many many uh, barricades and blockades and, and I think um, not a lot of support because of being a young mother I remember I went to this this place still exists actually it's called the door I owe a lot uh, to the door um, they are an adolescent center that is in Manhattan and I started going there um, when I was 18 when I found out that I was pregnant or 17 turning 18 so, um, and they provide I don't know right I think it's shifted a little bit throughout the years but uh, when I was there they provided a GED program they still do. Um, food um, therapy yes. arts programs daycare yes all of that uh, recreational things everything Everything and I went there and I got my GED and I um, had a child care there while I was in the building and using the resources that were available um, and the and you know being in this and being at the door uh, really it was invaluable like the support that I got there the young mothers group that I was a part of the the information that I learned so I think. I think that we can have a conversation all day long about if young people should have children or not, and then many people will say, absolutely not, you should wait till you get older. I feel um, like the main, sorry to cut you off, I feel like the main thing about that is assuming that because of my age that I'm not aware or I'm not old enough to decide what I want to do with my body. I think people are putting age as a higher, like at a higher regard than anything else. Because age doesn't really dictate where your mental state is, how well, mature yeah, you are. Yeah, it's not a cookie what, cutter model, right? Yeah, what you can handle. Because I'm like, just because, like, I know me at 17 was different than someone else at 17. Right. But let me finish my thought before I forget, because I'm older and I forget things. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so I had those resources in order to learn, you know, like all of these wonderful things about breastfeeding, about, you know, things that I just didn't even know about. And that was such a privilege, such a privilege to learn those things and to have support from people. Because I have friends who were um, pregnant, you know, teens, and you know, went into the hospital to give birth, and they were being absolutely shamed while giving birth. You know, while they're giving birth, like who does that to someone, right? So, regardless, like I was saying, regardless if you think it's a horrific idea or you are neutral on the idea, um, it happens. We live in a world where teen pregnancy does happen. And so I think a part of um, talking to young people, uh, again, we, we continually talk about fear tactics. It's not about the fear tactics. It's about, like, I shared my story. I didn't tell my daughter, do not do this, do not do that. I, she just she, gave me information. She was living it with me, and I was giving her for real, like, for real information, not, you know, like, storytelling. I think that's um, the best way to, I guess, combat it would be to give information. A lot of these girls are getting pregnant young because they don't know about protection or how to say no or mm -hmm. how there's other things you can do without having intercourse, you know, like, or about birth control, anything like that. Like, I'm pretty sure if people had information earlier, then they would make different decisions. Mm -hmm. Not saying better or worse, but just different. Mm -hmm. Well, just more information. So it always goes back to me. This, this is the heal project, this is about pure love. It always goes back to me about these relationships that we have with our parents, our caregivers, our, our adoptive parents, our, you know, our, our aunts, uncles, guardians. grandparents, guardians, like the conversations and the relationships that we foster with our family of origin uh, or our adoptive families, like is so vital, right? Um, because rather than me telling my daughter, um, um, this is the way you should do stuff. I just did it with her, right? I, I just showed her by example. Like um, having a conversation with another person in front of her about the difficulties of juggling school full-time, working full-time, and raising her. 
and bringing her to school with me when I was doing it, right? So telling her these things is one thing, but actually her experiencing it and seeing how it's affecting my life really, and, and also allows her to ask me questions, right? Like to ask questions about uh, different um, things and then exposing her. I mean, all the time we, um, I, I love the this thing about um, uh, watching movies and then like or documentaries together and stuff. And we, t- we t- watched a lot of stuff around um, young parents and things. And, and afterwards, we just have like an in-depth like discussion about um, that person's life or the decisions they made or anything like that. So it's never, a, you know, this thing where we're just like, tell me what you think about that. Or what would you do if that was your open yeah. discussion? You know, what would you do? How would you take care of that? Um, if you were in this really tough thing, like, who would you ask for help? And how? So it was more about building those survival skills, building, um, you know, the skills to critically analyze things. Um, I think that was helpful um, because I knew that I did not, absolutely did not have the power to, to tell my daughter, um, don't get pregnant. <laughs> you know, I, I, could, I could wish that with all my heart and soul. But at the end of the day, my daughter has to have the skills and the information to, to make that decision on her own, whether it's conscious or sub- unconsciously. Uh, I, I, when you really look at it, I don't have complete power over her. I also think that builds the relationship between parent and child about not being a hypocrite and understanding that- That's a big one. Things are gonna happen and your job is just to love me and support me anyway. And vice versa, you know. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about shaming me or making me feel bad or being like, oh, you're so stupid. You did the same thing I did. Like, didn't right. you learn from my mistakes? Mm-hmm. And it's not even about that. And then that may make your child feel worse about themselves. I'm a mistake. Mm-hmm. I'm something you regret that you wish that you could change. Right. And mm-hmm. they need to understand that that's not, well, if this is really the case. If that's not the case, that they weren't a mistake, that you just want things to be less difficult for them. Right. And then that's the conversation, then, right? The conversation is about, uh, you know, like a difficult life. What makes it a difficult life? These things. And because it's know, like no matter what, layers, having right? a kid is difficult. Like I Absolutely. work in a preschool, and I, there's parents there who make ridiculous amounts of money, and they're still they still come in with that face like, <sighs> last night was rough. Mm-hmm. Like, and they have nannies. They have a two parent household. They have their grandparents. Right. They have so much support, and they have us for nine hours a day, every day. So, but they're still just like, damn, like, mm-hmm. it does get rough. So regardless of your economic status, your age, you're single, you're married, you have no family, you have a full family, having kids is hard regardless. It's never going to get easy, and it's never something you can truly plan for. Mm-hmm. It's just, you have to just roll with it. Mm-hmm. I think there are additional um, obstacles um, when you don't have a job, you're of a little younger because in society it will be very difficult for you to get a job that can sustain you in this society where things are it's so economy. expensive. Um, so those are you know things to think about. But I think um, I I am happy with the way that I had these conversations uh, with her because I never ever wanted you to think that you were some mistake or anything. Um, that um, I wanted to just um, talk to you about sex. Like, are you having sex? <laughs> are you doing this? Are you making good decisions? Um, do you have any questions for me? Can I be there for you? So that was, those were the questions rather than jumping right to the pregnancy piece, right? Like, don't get pregnant. <laughs> There's so many other things to worry about besides that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope that we answered your question. Thank you for uh, your question. Yes, and please continue to send in more questions, uh, topics that you would like us to talk about, or If you are interested in interviewing us, um, please let us know at uh, purelovetalks at gmail.com and uh, sign up for a subscription um, at www.purelovetalks.com and we also have a YouTube channel. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.